I initially thought you know, I could have something like this multifaceted approaches to advancing conservation in the Amazon and the ocean, but my wife always grades me on things like this, and I probably get an F for something like that. So what I decided to call it is advancing marine conservation in the most amazing place you've probably never heard of. So what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is biodiversity, and biodiversity, uh, simply put, can be described as variations of life form within an ecosystem by on the planet. It doesn't matter if you're talking about a uh, coral reef ecosystem or a, a swamp, uh, tropical rainforest, uh, it's, it's all biodiversity. And the important thing with biodiversity uh, comes from a quote, unfortunately it's getting cut off here by the Convention on Biodiversity. At least 40% of the world's economy and 80% of the needs of the poor are derived from biological resources. <coughs> the richer the diversity of life, the greater the opportunity for medical discoveries, economic development, and adaptive responses to such new challenges as climate change. So we depend heavily on biodiversity as a global society. And biodiversity is not randomly distributed around the planet. It's actually focused in uh, a number of places that are referred to as biodiversity hotspots, uh, here shown in red. And one of the hotspots I'm going to talk to you about is right here, a region that's called the Coral Triangle. It's called the Coral Triangle because it has the most corals of any place on the planet. Its, its boundaries are defined by the presence of more than 500 species of hard coral. Um, it, is comprised of six countries, Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and the Solomon Islands, and encompasses an area of six million square kilometers. Now, if you looked at the Coral Triangle in comparison to biodiversity in the rest of the oceans, what you would see is that there's a peak of biodiversity in the Coral Triangle, and where do you go north, south, east, or west, from the Coral Triangle, what you see is a very sharp decrease in the numbers of marine species that are there. And to give you some perspective on just how diverse the Coral Triangle is, you guys have probably all heard about the Caribbean. You know, people go there, go scuba diving, snorkeling, you know, honeymoons, things like that. In the Caribbean, there are two species of coral in the genus Acropora. Acropora are branching corals. So, you know, they have these fine branches or thicker branches. If you go into the Coral Triangle, Coral Triangle is a very threatened marine environment. Um, this graphic here, these red dots indicate reefs that are likely to be lost forever within the next 20 to 30 years. So not only is it the most biologically diverse marine environment on the planet, it's one of the most threatened. Um, within Indonesia and the Philippines, which is the vast majority of area of the Coral Triangle, 80% of these reefs are threatened and uh, risk being lost. So what does one do about something like that? Well, we have a model from terrestrial ecosystems where we find places that are very special, that are potentially threatened by human activities, and we create national parks, we create reserve systems. Uh, so here we've got uh, this, this park here in Africa saying all the things you can and can't do, you know, no motorbikes, you know, please don't feed the monkeys. I've lived with monkeys, you definitely do not want to feed the monkeys, they help themselves plenty. Um, but we can do this in marine environments as well. Uh, so uh, here's uh, a sign from uh, the Stony Point uh, Nature Reserve, uh, again saying what you can and can't do uh, in the reserve. And these marine reserves or marine protected areas are very, very effective uh, tools for conservation. So if you look within a marine reserve or a marine protected area and you compare it to areas that are outside, what you see is that the density of animals in the marine protected area are much higher, the animals themselves are much larger, 
And the diversity, the different kinds of animals that you have within that marine protected area is also higher than what you would see outside of the marine reserve. So marine reserves work. They're a very good tool. But there's one challenge with marine reserves that's very, very different from terrestrial environments. One of the things that, the, one of the goals of these courses isn't just to train people how to do it, it's, it's, to, it's to train people so that they can go off and do it on their own uh, or in collaboration with others. And so uh, Aji here, one of the projects he's working on is using genetics to identify distinct management units in commercial tuna because commercial tuna is a very important food source for a lot of uh, Indonesia. Um, Sam, uh, who may or may not be here, is doing a very similar thing, but she's doing it uh, in uh, reef squid. Dita, who is here, um, she is uh, working uh, with, with Aji as well on using genetics to forensically ID the fins that people cut off of sharks and shell, sell them to the shark fin trade. Now in Indonesia, it's only legal to fin some sharks. Most sharks are illegal to do this, but the thing is, is once they all look like this, you can't really tell them apart by species. And so the people that do enforcement, you know, they can come across a big bag of fins like this, but they have no way to prosecute because they can't tell what species these are. But we can't. We use genetics. Same way that the FBI identifies blood at a crime scene. So those species have a unique DNA sequence that allows us to determine. We need to have people in Indonesia know about this area. We need to have people worldwide know about this area and know how amazing it is so that they care enough to do something. Um, and you know, it's my hope that uh, by doing research that provides data for conservation organizations like Conservation International, TNC, doing it in a way that provides training opportunities and, and builds this community of marine scientists, we will raise awareness. And we eventually will get to a point where someday on the Forum 5, I want to see one of these. Um, and when we finally get to this point, then hopefully we'll end up with fewer coral reefs in the coral triangle that look like this, and more of them that stay like this. So thank you.